work that and stay flat, okay? Okay, I'm a flat earther. Hey guys, and welcome back to round two of uh, Flatterday Night Fights. Uh, tonight in corner number one, we have the uh, well-known non-sequitur guest, Fight the Flat Earth. And in corner Hello. number two, we have a new guest, um, The Way of Tahuti, who was supposed to be debating me earlier. Uh, there's a little bit of a mix-up on everything, but he's here now, and he's here to debate Fight the Flat Earth. So um, we get a lot of the same people here on the Non Sequitur Show. It's always great to see a new face. Uh, why don't you take a few moments to introduce yourself? Oh, should I go first? Yeah, yeah, yeah go, go ahead. ahead. All right, greetings, everybody. My adult buddy name is Tahuti. I run a channel called The Wave Tahuti. And The Wave Tahuti is basically mind expanding consciousness, cutting edge research, ground groundbreaking information. And really what I, I tend to do, I really I started off dealing with quantum physics and quantum mechanics, and then I got into the flat earth movement a little over like two years ago, right? And, I'm, and what I tend to do, I tend to bring the quantum aspect into the flat earth movement. So really, I'm not really a typical flat earther. And that's what was what made this debate, original debate between me and Team Skeptic more interesting is because I'm not really a typical flat earther. So I just wanted to see how, you know, how you would have to deal with someone of my, you know, my caliber and my research and the things that I deal with. So, yeah. Well, that's great to know that's because I do actually like to uh, follow a lot of quantum mechanics and quantum physics, and I don't talk to a lot of people about it because a lot of people are just completely ignorant about the principles involved. So maybe one day we can have you on my channel and we can just have a open discussion about quantum mechanics and how they apply to uh, the shape of the Earth. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be up for it. I'll be up for it. Okay, great. Now, uh, everybody already knows Sean, uh, Sean Hufford. He was there to, uh, to uh, moderate the first round. He's here to moderate this round. Yes. Uh, the way we're going to go, it's going to be a completely structured and formatted debate. I believe what we're doing is five minutes uh, a piece to do a general introduction of your, uh, your worldview philosophy. Um, and then we'll go into a five minute discussion where you'll, or I'm sorry, a 10 minute discussion where each one of you will present your own points. Uh, you'll each get 10 minutes for that. And then we'll open it up to, I believe it's either a 15 or 20 minute discussion where you will refute the points brought up by the other contestant. Are you okay with that, Dewey? Yeah, that's cool. I'm good with that. Okay, great. Dave, are you ready? All right, five minutes. Tahuti, since you're new to the, uh, to the non sequitur show, what we'll do is we'll either give you the option of going first or allowing uh, Fight the Flat Earth to go first. Yeah, I can go first. I don't mind that. Okay. So, Hootie, you have five minutes from when you begin talking. Uh, start when you're ready. But how, do, how do I share my screen, though? Um, I believe Dave can take care of that. Uh, Dave, are you able to share his screen? Um, actually, screen sharing is not something we do here at the Non Sequitur Show. If you had information oh. to send me, <laughs> you should have sent it to me for the show. Um, that would however, be my fault. I didn't tell him. Yeah, well, that's that's fine. Is there any way you can present your information without sharing your screen? I mean, I could, but a little, a little more difficult, a little bit less informative. Can, the image. can you present it? Can you present it in your quadrant, and uh, and we can? I, I, I don't know how we <clears> expand <throat> it, but if you can present it at least in your quadrant. Um, that would be is it, is it um, a video that's online that you're trying to present because you could just send that link to Dave and he can play it for you Yeah, I can play videos and pull up websites, etc There's a few videos, but it's more of a PowerPoint really though I can do PowerPoint as well if you send me the PowerPoint uh, Let me put my email address in the ch in the chat here why don't we do this? Why don't we let um, Fight the Flat Earth go first with his five minutes? And then uh, during that time, why don't you get um, get the producer anything you need to get him uh, so he can have it ready for your five-minute production or your presentation. Okay, cool. Okay, so Fight the Flat Earth, uh, we will start your five minutes when you are when you begin talking. Okay, thank you. Hey, guys, I'm Fight the Flat Earth. Um, so today I will... 
present my proof for, or my evidence uh, for the Earth being a globe with a circumference of approximately 25,000 miles. Um, my proofs will include things from space agencies, um, proofs of visible curvature, um, proofs of things going into the vacuum of space, um, obeying the laws of physics as we understand them. Um, I will uh, cite articles that um, prove that gravity is what we say they are, um, and I will do my best to present a solid argument to show that the Earth, the Earth is the globe that we are told that it is, and there is plenty of evidence out there that anyone can find. Um, I don't like it when people say that I can't refer to NASA or I can't speak on behalf of this person because I haven't done observations myself. That doesn't matter. Science isn't about everybody doing the observations themselves and things like that. Other people have done observations that I can refer to. Um, Red Rhetoric is someone that I usually bring up because he has done the observations that Flat Earthers have been asking for. So I've got a couple of videos that, of Reds that I can present that will help my case. Um, uh, apart from that, I just want to say that uh, if you guys haven't subscribed to my channel already, then please do. I'm about to hit 7,777 subscribers, and I want a screenshot of that. Um, I'll get into my proofs in the, the, the 10 minutes that we have, but for now, I'll just give the rest of my time back to the moderator. All right. Now, uh, Dave, have you, uh, are you ready for the presentation for Tahuti yet? I have not received it. Oh, one second. I just got the email now. Give me a second. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, fight the flat earth. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, flat earthers in general will tell you that you can't refer to the scientific consensus, but I, I have a different opinion about that. I, I don't think you can refer to certain individuals just based on their authoritative uh, position. I do think you can refer to, th to people and things that have been put through, uh, through peer review. Something that has been submitted where people can refute the, the, uh, the claims being made, where the, uh, the claim is falsifiable. So as long as the, you're presenting a falsifiable claim that has you know, uh, peer review behind it. I don't think that that's uh, the same thing as just saying, oh, this guy over here said. Yeah, it's, it's not like I'm just appealing to authority. Um, I'm yeah. more appealing to the fact that they present physics that works within our reality. Um, so anything like that, I will just go with. Um. <clears throat> All right, so Dave, how are you doing over there? You got it yet? No. Okay. No, give me a second. Give me a second. One second. One second. All right. Now, uh, Sean, do you have anything to add to any of this? Um, I know I got disconnected when I was trying to introduce myself to Way or to Hootie. Um, but other than that. I think we're at a slight pause here while we wait for Tahuti to get the information to Dave. <clears throat> I suppose okay, we well, could just shout out our new channel again, Skeptic. That, that's exactly what I was about to do. Uh, for those of you that didn't catch it at the beginning, uh, starting, I believe tomorrow, we're going to do our first live show on Fight the Flat Earth channel. Um, it's going to be, the name of the channel will be Science or Satire. Um, we'll be doing a little bit of science, we'll be doing a little bit of satire, and we'll be pre presenting a lot of science in a set satirical, uh, satirical form. Uh, so we encourage you guys, we'll try to get that channel out to you tomorrow. Um, we encourage you, if you're a subscriber of either one of our channels right now, please subscribe to us on that channel, and we will start putting out content over the next week or so. Uh, eventually, it will evolve into a daily show that you can watch while you're at work very family friendly uh or very work uh i guess sfw you know we're gonna be putting out sfw stuff it doesn't mean we're gonna be nice or not cuss or anything like that but it does mean that if you're playing it at work while you're doing your menial accounting tasks or whatever it is that you may do you'll be able to listen to us and have a good laugh as well yeah i'm looking forward to it and um you know it's a joint channel um that skeptic and i are going to run together 
um, yes. which I really love because <laughs> I'm still, I suppose, relatively new to the debunking scene. I only, I only came in end of November, beginning of December last year. And, <clears throat> you know, not only was the non sequitur someone that I'd watched for a long time, but Skeptic's channel is one of my influences and one of the reasons why I started my channel. So the, op the opportunity to do this with Team Skeptic is, uh, is really good, and I'm really looking forward to it. Hey, Tahuti, uh, what, how long have you had your channel for? My channel, I've had my channel now going on four years now. Well, since 2014, four so four, five years now. Yeah, we saw that you have like uh, you have a pretty good following, pretty good. Uh, about what seventeen thousand uh, followers. That's that's pretty substantial. Good yeah. shit. Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Do you put out? Well, all you the 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 uh, oh, I'm sorry. We've got a newly married man in the chat. Godless engineer. Congratulations, sir. Hey, GE. Congratulations, yeah. man. I will say first and foremost, congratulations. Um, well done. Now go get laid. <laughs> yeah. yeah, why are you on the internet, dude? <laughs> it's your wedding night. There's other things. So uh, if you guys my question watching, you know, the reason Team Skeptic and Sean are down there is because um, Goddess Engineer is getting married today. How probably is married now to Caitlin, um, and Kyle was actually officiating the wedding, which yes. is awesome. So um, he kind of gave me the channel for tonight. So we've set up these things. Um, so yeah, it's a massive congratulations to Goddess Engineer. Yeah, my my only question is it uh, G E dash C or is it G C dash E? <laughs> Are well, we hyphenated if they have a Chloe or is it the engineer that's getting hyphenated? I, I'm Are... going to request that they name their first kid Oliver so that they can beat Gecko. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I no, have congratulations and much love to you, big brother. Uh, congratulations on getting married tonight. Give Definitely. Kyle a big hug and kiss for, from all of us. Yes. And I also have your PowerPoint here. So you will just call out yeah. next slide whenever you want me to do that. And we will go through it that way, okay? Should we just make Good this the, the, the 10 minute section? Because we've already both kind of introduced ourselves. So if where to he can just present his ten minute argument here and then I can do mine. Yeah, uh, you you good with that, Tahuti? Yeah, I'm fine with that. That's cool. Okay. So we'll go directly into the ten minute section. Tahuti will lead us off on that part. Um he's gonna present us a PowerPoint presentation and we're all gonna shut up and let him have the floor for a moment. Dave, you let us know when you're ready and Tahuti when the uh when the graphic goes up, start talking and that's when we'll start your time. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, I am ready when you are. <clears throat> uh, you know, there should be a next section below it. There's another, there's another section. There's a part of the part on gravity. Does it should be there? It doesn't animate, right here, by the way. It doesn't show animations if you have any. So that's fine, but this will be another section. Is this a it? section on gravity? Hang yeah, on. that's it. That's it. Okay. I'll click next, please. Okay, and so to start it off, you know, the consensus that we're, that we're dealing with right now is gravity is a philosophy and a belief. That's really what gravity is. So what we said, what we showcase so okay, so right here, gravity is not an observable phenomenon. Gravity is a concept devised by 17th century philosophers, notably Johannes Kepler and Isaac Newton to explain the motion of the planet. So that's all, that's all the theory of gravity was originally, it was just to explain the motion of the planets, right? Both Kepler and Newton proposed that gravity was a force, and in his book Principia, Newton stated that it is a centripetal force by which bodies are drawn, impelled, and tend in some manner from all sides towards some point as towards a center. So, could you click next, please? So now, should I, should I go back? Go back. Right. So now, again, so. The, the, again, we're dealing with gravity now. It's purely philosophical and it's pure, pure belief, right? So now, if you click next, click next. Click next again, please. So now here's what we want to do with now. This, this, this part is important. 
So now, it should, I think I should say it's up now, Einstein versus Newton. So now again, in his book, The Principia, Isaac, Isaac Newton stated that it's a centripetal force by which bodies are drawn in power, tending some manner from all sides towards some, towards some point as towards a center. Gravity is a force of this kind, but by which objects tend, tend toward the center of the Earth. So Einstein's or Isaac Newton's original theory was that gravity is a force, you see. But in the 1600s now, again, when we did what we're dealing with now, it had to, it had to be upgraded because the, you know, the, the level of education was low, so you could get away with saying that it is, a, it is a force, gravity is a force. So Einstein had to essentially upgrade this philosophy by saying that, so again, general relativity now, gravity is a product of warp space-time, and the sun keeps the Earth in orbit, not by exerting a physical force on it, but because its mass distorts the surrounding space and forces the Earth to move in that way. So this is what Einstein said. So, but they, now, so now I want to deal with now, the concept now of when we're dealing with give me a second, give me a second. We're dealing with now. <clears throat> so now I want to ask, I want to ask the question now, what makes the earth spin? So again, based on Einstein's theory now, gravity or all masses create a, essentially a bend in space-time, and then the earth simply revolves around this curve. So what exactly? makes the earth spin so that's what makes the earth orbit the sun but what exactly makes the earth spin you see so what they so what exactly makes the earth spin in a sense that we because again according to the model now the earth spin which is what gives us our 24 hours in a day so what makes the earth spin so it's a perfect 24 hours in a day based on this gravity that's the that's the question i'm asking now what makes the earth spin so again when you're dealing with the conflict of isaac and isaac newton and albert einstein the conflict currently right now is in the physics community, they know that the model is incomplete. Right now, the model is incomplete. And the reason why the model is incomplete because they see the flaws in both Einstein and Newton. They see the flaws in Newton as centripetal force, but you can jump. There is no centripetal force. Centripetal force pulling pulling you down. You see, and that's what they understand. There is no centripetal force. So the, the so the new the, I, the Einstein model model then replaced this, right? So now the problem that they're having now they're seeing essentially the benefits and flaws of both these two two guys' theories. So they say, so what they so when you're dealing with mass now, now they're saying there's two types of mass. Inertial mass, which is a resistance to acceleration, and then they have a gravitational mass. So they they, they clearly see there's issues here because the gravity it works in space. It works up there, but when you when you bring it down to the Earth level, that's when it falls apart. That's when gravity begins to fall apart, and the model falls apart. So they had to come. So they had to separate and create two types of mass. But really, the next question I would like to ask is: Can you please define mass? Define mass for the people. What exactly is mass? And I'll, I'll, further on this presentation, I will explain. Really, there is no such concept of mass, and we're going to explain this later on. But this, 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 you know, this, they said that there's two types of mass, you see, because again, we can't, there is no observable gravity on Earth. We can't observe gravity. Gravity is not an observable phenomenon, but yet gravity works up there. So when they're saying the laws, Einstein or Isaac Newton's laws work on, in, you know, they still work. Yeah, they work up there. They work in a place that no one's truly ever explored, right? But down on Earth, that's when it falls apart, right? Now, another factor now. So again, we're going to go back to mass later. That's my question. So the two questions is, what makes the Earth spin? And what exactly is mass? Can you define mass? That's what I would like to know. And then the next thing now I want to deal with, there's something called, they have a principle of equivalence. This is what they call it, principle of equivalence. And this principle of equivalence is allegedly a proof of gravity, right? So the, the principle of equivalence states that all objects fall at the same rate regardless of their mass or composition, provided there are no forces acting upon them other than gravity. So in a vacuum chamber, again, and also you, a lot of you guys have already seen the experiment, but the vacuum chamber with the, the feather falling, right, and the balloon, I mean, the bowling ball hitting the ground at the same time, so they call it the principle of equivalence. Right? So I do actually have another video on here, so now you can go to the next slide, please. Next, please. Actually, let's see. Should I go back? Go back. We'll save that. We'll save this. We'll save this. Go back. We'll save this. 
that's the end of the slideshow. Which one do you want me to go to? They're numbered one through go eight. Go back, go back, go back. Go back, go back. Let's go forward, go forward. Just leave it. Yeah. Go forward, forward. Forward again. Yeah, leave it here. So again, that's what really that's really what we're dealing with. So again, there is a video. There should be a video there, but you know, it's a bit awkward. You know, sending the presentation. I thought I could share my screen going into this debate, but it's unfortunate. But again, we go we're going to that a little bit later dealing with that aspect. But again, so my question really is, what is mass? So really, mass is not a tangible phenomenon. Mass you can't observe. Mass and in in physics they have the mass density triangle. They have mass density and they have volume. Really, mass doesn't belong in that triangle, really. Mass doesn't belong there. Volume, we can observe that. Density can be observed, right? And I have a, I have a concept known called density relativity, which we'll also explain a little bit later. But well, really, that's what we're dealing with. So again, the questions I would like to ask is, can you define mass for the people? What is mass? And what makes the Earth spin? So that's, I, wanna, I, would, I would like to end it there. You know, I'd like to end it there. You know, hand off my time right now. That's pretty much it. All right. Um, White the flat Earth, you want to present your side of the case before you refute each other? <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, okay, I before, we start, I was, I, before we get started, I'd like to say that Tahuti came prepared to speak about gravity, so that's why most of his proof is about gravity. Mm -hmm. I do want to give him that uh, that concession because th this at this point we're talking about the shape of the Earth because the last discussion was supposed to be about gravity, but... Thank you, Tahuti, for presenting that. Um, you and I can have that conversation. That's fine. I got, I got two of everything. I don't mind that. That's, that's fine. Okay, great. All right, so go ahead, fight the flat earth. We'll get started with you once you begin speaking. All right, yeah. Um, obviously, I'll, I'll cover everything that he said uh, in, in the rebuttal when we we're mainly talking about gravity. But um, I would just like to present some direct evidence of the fact that we live in an atmosphere that has a vacuum outside of it. Um, David, the, the videos I sent you, um, could you bring out the red rhetoric one? Uh, give me one second. I didn't realize you'd sent me multiple ones that had anything to do with this. So hold on a sec. Yeah, it's Jade's launch. It's the second video I sent you. Okay. Uh, three minutes 30 in. Three minutes 30, okay. Okay. <clears throat> what I am going to present is the direct evidence that um, rockets go into a vacuum. Um, when David brings up the video, I'll, I'll explain as the video plays how it is evidence of what I say. Um, this is obviously part of my proof, or part of my evidence that we do live on the world that we are told, um, that obeys the laws of physics that we all understand. Um, <clears throat> so it's whenever you're ready, David. Uh... This thing is now asking me to sign up for YouTube TV. <laughs> it's being stupid, is what it's doing. So sign the fuck up. No. <laughs> you can't make me. All I'm right. just trying so, to get us uh, pushed up in the algorithm by promoting YouTube products. So 3.30, huh? Let me get this to 3.30. Yeah, 3 minutes, sorry. <laughs> This should be close enough. All right, okay. Well, what we see here is a rocket as it is. Um, it's already gone up into space. You can watch the, the rest of the video before that to see it. But um, what we will see is as the rocket goes further and further up, um, it reaches a point here where the sun is illuminating the gases coming out the back of it. Now, the important thing here that you will notice is once the next stage goes, the, the gas coming out the back expands more and more. It reacts to the pressure that is outside of the rocket. What we're seeing here is a rocket literally transitioning from an atmosphere into a vacuum. And this is shown by the fact that the gas is expanding at that rate now that it is transitioned into a vacuum and there is no pressure to keep the gas compressed as it comes out the back of the rocket. So that is not only direct evidence that kind of NASA does what they say, but direct evidence that we live in an atmosphere 
that is created by gravity with a pressure gradient that reaches zero PSI. Um, so that is all we need to show for that video. Um, if you could bring up the other video that I um, sent you at just at 30 seconds. Right, the next thing I'm going to show you is direct evidence of the curvature of our planet. Um, this was taken by a channel called Voice of Reason. Um, his own footage, no one else's. Um, and it shows you that the oceans do in fact curve the way that we say. Um, and I'll explain how once David brings up oh. the video. Of course, it, it won't let me skip the ad. Sign up for YouTube TV, you'll be all right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. You go YouTube TV and you'll be able to see it. Horizon right. all disappear at the bottom at the same. All right. So uh, just go. Yeah. There's a point where you can see the uh, it's zoomed quite in on it about 30 seconds, I think. OK, there yeah, just go. there. All right. If you just pause it there. Right. What we can see here is the horizon line above where the ship is. That could not happen on a flat Earth. That is evidence that the oceans are curving. Um, direct evidence that there is curvature to our oceans that can be seen by anybody that has a camera. Um, obviously, at all points, the ocean is curving away from you. So that is exactly what is being shown there. You would not see the horizon line above the boat like that if the earth was flat and the oceans were flat. Um, so yeah, that is two direct evidences of the, the shape of our earth and things that we are told being true. Um, with that, I'll just give the rest of my time back to the moderator. All right, so uh... <clears throat> I guess uh, from here, uh, we're going to do a 20, is it 20 minutes, Dave? 15 minutes for the rebuttal usually. 15, okay. 15 minutes to, um, is this open discussion or just rebuttal? No, it's just rebuttals. Um, to who he's going to go first on reboot, rebutting what Flight the Further Report presented, and then Flight the Further will actually go against um, what okay. he presented in his first phase, and then they'll do an open discussion back and forth after that. This is a healing All right. balloon. Tahuti, uh, you're up right now. Um, anything you'd like to say about the evidence he produced right now, uh, please go ahead. So I'm basically just rebutting his. I can't any, present any, you know, any more points. Yeah, well, yeah, we're going to do an open discussion. Me. Yeah, just rebut, oh, his, the, uh, refute the evidence that he supplied. He's going to refute the evidence that you supplied, and then we'll go into a 20-minute open discussion. Or you can provide okay. more evidence at that point. Okay, that's cool. All right, and so just to refute that, there wasn't really much there to refute. I mean, those are just typical arguments as it pertains to, you know, the round earth, really. We know that, you know, you, you, they say a bolt disappears beyond the curve, but you take a P900 out, you can actually, you can still see the bolt, you know. Again, so these are typical arguments that are presented by the round earth. It says something about um, rockets and the vacuum and, much, you know, other. I can't remember what that was. What, what was the video? Was it Rocking the Vacuum or something? Yeah, that was um, a video that Red Rhetoric recorded of, um, I think it was a SpaceX launch. Um, and it just happened to be at the right time where the, the, the sunlight illuminated the gases coming out the back of the rocket, giving us a good view of what happens to the gases as they reach zero PSI. Okay, and well, I'm not really sure what to say to that, but. You know, when you do, again, the round earth really, I got more evidence that I can really showcase, but really what we can sh showcase really that the round earth really is a mythology, really is a belief system. There is no tangible evidence of a curvature that, you know, the horizon remains flat at any altitude, really and truly. So there is no tangible evidence of a curvature at this point. So that's really, based on the evidence presented, that's really what we're, what we're dealing with at this point, really. Can you tell us why it, um, can you tell me why the rocket video didn't prove that space is real? 
What do you mean? I don't, I don't understand. Okay, so his uh, he's presenting evidence for um, for a pressure gradient eventually going into the vacuum of space. Do you agree that there's a vacuum of space, or would you say that's a fundamental disagreement you have with a uh, globe Earth? I would say, well, prove a space. That's what I would say. Give it evidence of a space. Did. Okay, but I'll, I'll, how the flat Earth? I'll step out. How the, that oh, yeah, I, that, that, I'm not sure. I presented evidence that space was real. Well, I'm not really sure what that actually was, but I mean, prove a space. I mean, there's supposed to be satellites, hundreds of satellites around the Earth, but again, CGI images is all we receive. So, prove a space, really, that's what I could say, really. I mean, CGI images is all we get. A rocket video from a looking down up, and we got satellites in space. We should be able to see pictures of the Earth 24 7 all the time, but all we get is CGI images, that's all we get. Hollywood, you know, movie is all we that's all we receive. So, prove a space is all I could say to that. I mean, this is much what I'm supposed to be responding, but that, that was my evidence. That that proves that there is a vacuum of space, or it's evidence of a vacuum of space. That was the point of it. Yeah, I mean, that may prove, and from your perspective, but I mean, again, my, well, my, from my understanding, there's supposed to be thousands of satellites already in space, so the images that they give us really should just should be enough, but that's really not the case because all we have is CGI images. So, I mean, we, we don't really need to go to that aspect right there when we have thousands of satellites supposed to be giving us imagery, but that's okay, not what we so do. So to keep it on topic, um, can we say, can you just refute, uh, to start out, just refute the fact that what he just showed was not proof that the pressure gradient eventually goes to zero PSI? Cool, then I, I don't really know what the, what the video was, but cool, say that. Say that. <laughs> well, it, it's the video of uh, that he was saying from Red's Rhetoric where the rocket goes up, and a, as you can see in the video, the exhaust begins expanding to a point that you can no longer keep it in one frame. This is proof that the pressure surrounding that exhaust is becoming less and less, keeping it less conical and more circular. So that's what they're asserting. That's what um, Fight the Flat Earth is asserting with Red's Rhetoric's video. Now, you're well, how saying does that, that prove an absolute no space? Earth. How does that prove an absolute space of planets spinning at 1,000 miles an hour and a total solar system with galaxies and universes? How does that prove that? Well, it wasn't evidence of other planets and stuff. It just was direct evidence that there is a vacuum up there. That's what a space... That, I'm not here to refute a vacuum up there. If you want to say a vacuum up there, that's fine. But actually presenting evidence that up there... There is a vacuum. That's fine. If you want to say there's a vacuum up there, I got I, I got none to refute against that. But if you're talking about an absolute space, that doesn't prove an absolute space with thousands of planets and galaxies and universes and isn't sp planets spinning at a thousand miles an hour. That doesn't prove that a vacuum. That's fine, but absolute space, no. That's not proof of an absolute space, which is what um, which is what I was referring to. Okay, but um, what about the other? Video so yeah, I vacuum. That's fine. If you want to say it's a vacuum, that's cool. Say again, please. What about the other video I presented of direct evidence of curvature? That's just one of like well, hundreds, by the way. Well, again, but there's also hundreds of videos that showcase bolts that are supposed to go beyond the curve and supposed to fall, uh, supposed to go around the curve. You can, again, pull out a P900, you can still see that bolt. There's plenty of also videos that show that as well. So, I mean, that's um, really irrelevant, really. Hey, Dave, just, can just you bring for the, that, Just that for the historical of the video. Just, just for the historic, just for the history of that video, that actually was taken with P nine hundred. Well, I mean, there's so hey, many counts uh, of videos to that. So. Bullyinator, can you just pull that? Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so um, go ahead and Craig. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry. Fight the flat Earth has asserted that the ship that we're looking at is actually traversed the curve, and we cannot see the bottom of it. Whereas the the foreground is not traversed the curve. So we can see from the water line up. So uh, can you tell us, can, can you refute his uh, position that this is direct evidence that a curve exists? So, the, so what's this, what, what I'm looking at right here, what's this ship here then? What's this? Okay, right. So this, this is two ships, right? You've got one in the background where you can right. just see the cargo on it, okay? Um, so that's mm -hmm. behind the curve. Whereas the ship in front right. has not yet gone over the curve. So there, there is here direct evidence 
of a curve because you have something in front of the curve and something behind the curve. The water, like uh, if you look at the bottom of the ship that you can see, you can see the water line going up above the horizon line is literally above where the, the boat is, which if the earth was flat, that, that wouldn't be the case. But also the fact that there is literally another boat over the curve. Yeah, well, I see, well I see, yeah, I see what you're saying, but I mean, the evidence I presented really refutes that again, of, you know, with dealing with gravity and mass. That's just you know a video, but again, you know, we 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 don't really know where the person. Where was that video taken? Who's taking the video? Where is he standing exactly? Is that shown in the video uh, where that person all, is standing? Uh, it's a guy called um, Voice of Reason, and all the details of it are in the video. Let me let me let me. Uh, I believe that was. I'm not sure if that was taken by Voice of Reason or not, um, because I originally I I saw the that user... video. I believe the user was channel. actually named MC Tune. Okay. Both, um, it was MC Tune. Way, I didn't know that. That's awesome. By the way, both those videos are linked in the inside chat here in this video conference call. Okay. Yeah, I, I just to be factually correct, I believe someone else took the video. Uh, Wolfie uh, mirrored the video, and anyone after that, like I'm pretty sure Voice of Reason's video was after that. So. Uh, this was taken by a person. It wasn't NASA or uh, any kind of uh, agency or anything like that. It was done by a user. So uh, you can refute that regardless. I'm I'm not speaking to the validity of the video. I'm just telling you the history I know of it. Yeah, well, we can see what we can, you know, you can say, explain what you can see in the video. But as far as the full information, as far as where's the person standing, where's the location, that's still factors that need to be included in the evidence for it to be presentable evidence. As far as the curvature, but up again, based on the evidence I've previously given out, that really is irrelevant. But you know, again, we need to, more information. We need to come out as far as where the the location is, where is he standing, all these different things would have to take place because there's other counter videos that really refute that as well. So, you know, that's what I would say to that aspect right there. And honestly, that's the same exact reason why I don't really consider video proof of a curvature outside of certain things it's just unless someone's taking the proper measurements then it's just an observation it's not really presented as evidence to present it as evidence you need things like the refractive index of the uh of the environment there's so much more you need but you can also <coughs> excuse me you can also infer a lot from that because there is no refraction present or there's minimal refraction present so there's there are certain things that you would have to explain about that video uh, without the necessity for needing all of the points, like where it was taken, what the height was, uh, you can obviously see that there is what appears to ah. be a drop. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I actually, I actually have to stand corrected. It wasn't at McToon. It was MC the MC one. Oh, okay. I'm, so, <clears throat> I, I mean, I'm sure you could gather all the information to where it was and everything, but I mean. That, that is really irrelevant to the observation itself. Right. You know, the observation is a direct observation of curvature. Um, and you know, I, I, you know, if you're able to just explain how that isn't curvature, that, that would be great. Well, I mean, it's just an observation. There's plenty of observations that can't be explained, like you know, some observations of the moon that don't actually show a curved moon, but just a line that doesn't really, the moon's supposed to be the, or the, the moon's supposed to be a shape of the earth when the moon, you know, half moon and the moon goes to the crescent moon, but yet there's a line. We saw there's many different videos, many different observations, you know. If you want to present observations as evidence, that's up to you. But again, I'm dealing with science, I'm dealing with physics, I'm, dealing with, I'm coming with real hard information that needs to be, you know, we, 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 you know we're um, deal with some real hard information. I can, but, you know. If I can interject because he asked these specific questions and I now have the information he was looking for, I'm going to put a link in the chat for you, David. If you can pull up the description of this video, which is the original source of the ships over the horizon. And I'm only bringing this up because this was directly asked and I was able to look in the background and find it for you. And to Hootie, at the end so of this, we'll give you a little bit more so, time. Uh, we'll give you some more time. So do you want That's me fine. to pull this up, actually? Yeah, just the, we just need to see the description so everybody can see it. Okay. Because he has the Latin longs of both ships, both of their ships' registries, and his height above sea level when he did, actually took the observation. Okay. These are these. This is information that Tuti asked for, and I was able to actually go find it. This isn't trying to debunk him or whoever. This is just providing the information that he requested. 
Thank you, Sean. I should have gone to that source instead of some voice, from Voice of Reason. <clears throat> All right, so let's pull this up. And we will attempt to scroll this in, which doesn't seem to be working very well. Gotta love this. <clears throat> Bunch of comments. Yeah, just need the, the description. The, the description reads, cargo ship with the entire hull below the horizon. Only containers are visible unless they're deploying cargo submarines these days. The background ship called Conti Lion, and at 7 p.m. the ship was at minus 34.44074, um, the comma 151.18053, that's the coordinates of where it was. The foreground ship Epic was moored at minus 34.3693, Dash one five one point zero 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 four. The camera was at a location minus thirty four point three four seven one five zero point nine two one, and at ten meters ASL, Collins Rock in the suburb of Wuna NSW. So there's the details of where it was, the camera height, and the times and everything. So just just to uh, if we find out that the film was faked later, we'll go back and make a correction. Let's just assume for the time being that the the presenter is being honest and is presenting an honest representation of what he is doing. So at this point, Tahuti, what is your explanation as to how this isn't proof of courage? Well, I mean, based on everything that I've already stated and I've already broken down, there is no curvature, there is no round earth. So... That's just an observation to me. Maybe I don't know what exactly what it is, but that's just an observation. That's all I can say. Really, for that. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, so those well, are really. Did, did you go ahead? I'm sorry, Sean. I was gonna say that that pretty well covers the points that Craig brought up. Brought up. So, um, yeah. Would you like Craig to go after what you've already stated as your presentation? Duty. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, go. Yeah, you want to review what I've said? Yeah. All right. Okay. By the flat earth, the floor is yours. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> so you started saying gravity is not an observable phenomenon. Yes, that's right. What, what just happened then? No, we can do with that too. We can do with that. We can. Uh, 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 we can do with that too. I'm, I'm sorry, but as far as I'm concerned, that that is observing the phenomenon density, of gravity. Yeah. yeah more no, density than the air, so it just falls to the ground. That's right. Yes. Yes, it is. All right. All right. So. That is an observ you know that is an observable phenomenon of gravity, and we can also go to the density. Cavendish experiment um, for an observable phenomenon of gravity, uh, as in the torque on the tension wire that holds the bar. That is directly observing gravity, the force of gravity like happening. Um, that's the whole idea of the Cavendish experiment. The force of gravity um, you know, what makes the, the bar turn and the opposite, equal and opposite reaction is that there is a torque on the wire which you can figure out by knowing the um, tension coefficient of, of the torsion coefficient of the wire. So there is another direct observation of the phenomenon of gravity as far as I'm concerned. Um, so then you went on to say um, about is gravity a, a force where whereas Einstein described it as the curvature of space time yeah, this is an argument I'm currently in the middle of with um, Sleeping Warrior, um, who basically tries to say that Einsteinian gravity and Newtonian gravity are completely separate, whereas that is a very big misunderstanding and a total misrepresentation of um, Einstein's work and discovery. Uh, Newton described gravity as a force because that's what he could measure. He could measure the downward acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, using the knowledge he had and the observations that he had, he came up with Newton's universal law of gravitational attraction, F equals GM1 M2 over R squared, which works everywhere. Um, I mean, the, the bigger the distance is, yes, it, that, you know, there's things you have to change and think about Einsteinian, but for everything that we use on Earth, um, for sending rockets to space, um, for mechanical engineering, you know, all, all the stuff is based around Newton's laws of, you know, of, you know, we have to calculate forces on things. We use Newton's law of gravitational attraction to figure out what is happening. Um, engineers building bridges have to know this. They have to calculate the load on the bridges. 
um, because of gravity. And to do that, they would use Newton's law of gravitational attraction to work out the force. So um, yes, um, when Einstein came along, he um, snapped the wand by explaining away the apparent magical properties of gravity, um, you know, because as far as Newton was concerned, it was an invisible force, didn't know why it happened. Um, but Einstein came along and ascribed it to the curvature of space-time rather than just being an invisible force. So the way that we can think about gravity is um, it is the it is mass warping space-time, which changes the locality of other masses and manifests within Newtonian physics as an accelerating force. On Earth, we know that accelerating force has 9.8 meters per second squared. So um, I, I can cite an article to, to prove that um, uh, by George Musser, um, who is a contributing editor to a Scientific America um, and has written extensively about the relationship between Einstein uh, and Newtonian gravity, which Sleeping Warrior gets completely wrong. Trust me, this is going to be beautiful because I'm actually talking with the author of this article, George Musser himself. Um, I will uh, link that article in the, in the chat if you want to look at it for yourself. But within the article, it explains the relationship between Newtonian and Einsteinian gravity quite well, and how they're not completely separate, but actually intrinsically linked. Right, the next thing you brought up was what makes the Earth spin? Um, basically, uh, the conservation of momentum. When the Earth was formed, it, it, it was spinning. And in space, there is nothing to stop it spinning. So um, that's simply the answer to what makes the Earth spin is the fact that as it formed, it span because Can the way gravity brought everything together. And because there is nothing in space, there's no friction to stop okay. it spinning. The conservation of momentum means that it will continue to spin. Um, right. What is mass? Um, actually had the, the explanation up here. Um, the mass is the quantity of matter which a body contains as measured by its acceleration under a given force or by the force exerted on it by a gravitational field. So you saying that we don't know what mass is, is, is a bit of a strange thing to say. Um, I think you meant well, to, mass to say mass cannot why be does mass um, warp space time? Um, why does matter have mass? These are things that are being answered by CERN and the discovery of the Higgs field. Um, inertial mass is a mass parameter given the inertial resistance to acceleration of the body when responding to all types of force, whereas gravitational mass is determined by the strength of the gravitational force experienced by the body when in a gravitational field G. So they are both things that are explained by our model and are just different ways of um, figuring out what is going on. Um, Newton's laws, you said Newton's laws don't work on Earth. Well, they, they quite clearly do no. because using no, the no. equation, F equals G M1 M2 over R squared, I can work out the exact gravitational force acting on any object as long as I know the mass of that object. So to say that Newton's laws don't work on Earth is a very confusing thing to me. Um, no, then you mentioned about things falling at the same rate in a vacuum chamber. Yes, well done. That completely destroys any kind of buoyancy density um, argument for me. You did that yourself. Um, you that mentioned about P900s bringing things back into focus once they've gone over the curve. No. What happens is that um, your eyes maybe can't resolve an image and can't see that the boat has gone too far away. So you zoom in with your P900, which is a rubbish camera, by the way. Um, but you zoom in with your P900, and then you watch that boat go over the curve again. It's not coming back. When you're zoomed in on something and you actually watch it go over the curve, you, you can't bring it back. It doesn't happen because cameras don't work like that. They simply increase the resolution of what you're seeing. They don't like magically make things move position. They just make it bigger when you zoom in. Um, and I think that covers everything that you brought up. So I will hand the rest of my time back to the moderator. All right. Well, um, you brought up some points. He wanted to actually address them during your um time but i'm sure you guys want to have a free discussion about what his disputes were with those so if you want to throw up 20 minutes on the clock for us there david thank you and as soon as we'll go ahead and let tahuti start out and when you're ready to go the time will start okay i'm ready yeah i'm ready yeah you go ahead dude i'll answer questions for you so again can i, can I still mention points can i still show if you know evidence 
Or is this? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think this bit's basically just for us to have a back and forth. Um, I mean, you, if you want to talk about any of my refutions to your argument or bring up any other evidence we can talk about, but maybe we should go over the uh, the arguments that you brought up first, my refutions to them, and what you think about that. So, I mean, what did you think about yeah, me fine. saying that gravity is an observable phenomenon? Well, well it's not. Oh, it's not. That's density. What we're dealing with is density, density, relativity. Objects that are more dense than the air fall down, opposite are less dense, rise, up density, relativity, based on, based on the medium. And the, okay, okay the I have to the ask motion you then, where the object. Sorry, I don't think there's a point. I have to ask you, okay. where, where does a vector come from? Because density isn't a force. Density can't make things move. Um, Higgs field. Higgs field uh, gives density, density, relativity to matter. Right. Um, the Higgs field is to do with the reason why matter has mass, nothing to do with density. No, no, not mass. Not mass. Mass cannot be observed. Mass is a numerical value that the academics and the physicists give to matter, but there is no observable but mass, and that's my point. Density and volume can be observed. The density, mass, volume, triangle. Volume and density can be observed. Mass cannot be observed. Mass does not belong in a triangle. Can you prove how mass belongs in a triangle? Can you define and prove and show an observable mass? You cannot show an observable mass. You can't observe yeah, mass. Well, the thing is, you, value given to matter. Well, no, you have a mass, and your weight is how the gravitational force it. acting on that mass. So, oh. yes, weight you can, is this simply is resistance mass. within a medium based on density relativity. Weight is and, simply and resistance in a medium based density on density relativity. Your, your density thing is 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 completely wrong, and the, the simple how, way how? that I can tell you that it's wrong is because right. Let's look at this YouTube button that was made for me. All right. So you're saying if I let it go, it will fall because the air here is less dense than the button, yeah? Yes. Okay, but the air here is even, is more, is, sorry, is less dense than the air here. There is a pressure gradient. What do you mean the air here? Right, so the air wait, above the this button, okay. wait, 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 wait. The air above this button is less dense than the air underneath the button. So if it was to fall, because there is a less dense medium, then it would go up. No, no it wouldn't. So there you, there you go. There's your density thing blown out the water. Okay, let me deal with something. Let me deal with something. Let me deal with something right now. I didn't get to show this in my, in, during my time. Let me show you something. Let me deal with this. So again, you are, you're already familiar with the bowling ball and the feather in the vacuum, right? <coughs> yes. Hmm. So they would fall at the same yeah, rate. So I don't know if you can see. Yeah, so you can, I hope you can see this. Can you, can, you, can you see that on my screen? Aye. Can you see that? Yes. Yes, yeah, so I don't play this right now. The song and we, we let the air in the back, audio. it rises out. Okay? Mute okay. the audio. You oh. want oh, to mute the audio, you said? At, le at least reduce it. If you if you need the audio to play, at least reduce it a little bit because it's coming in. No, right we don't now. need the audio. We just we don't need the audio. If you want to mute the audio, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Let's play it again. That's fine. So again, what he's showcasing is a helium balloon in a vacuum. And as you can see now, helium in a vacuum, it sinks, right? It sinks. So mm -hmm. now, so I hope, you, I hope you can see that. So now, but, so going back to the principle of equivalence, all objects fall at the same rate regardless of their mass or composition, provided that there is no force acting upon them other than gravity. This is the cornerstone of gravity right here, this principle of equivalence. And what you just saw was yeah. a helium balloon dropping yeah. in the vacuum. So I would like to know what would happen if you put a helium balloon and a sack of bricks in a vacuum, which hits the ground first. That's what I would like to know. As you get again, play the video again, just so for the people, for the people, right? Again. Sorry. So your question was, if you put a helium balloon in a sack of bricks, what would hit the ground no, first? No. no, no, no. Helium balloon and a vacuum. No, 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 helium no, no, balloon no. and a sack yeah. of bricks in the vacuum. Which hits the ground first, based on the principle of equivalence. Again, objects fall at the same rate regardless of their mass. Say yeah, again, say in again. a vacuum, in a vacuum, a bag of bricks and a helium balloon is going to fall at the same rate. Again, so again, that's why I brought the video. I want to show you the video one more time. I don't think you saw the video. Play again. So you see the rate at which it's falling right now. Wait, let me go back. Let me go back. One second. So now you see the rate at which it falls. So I now you're to, telling me that I, that's the actual stream system behind. Can you do me a favor, Tahuti? Can you uh, put the link to that video in the side chat, um, and we will have the producer play that full screen. 
Um, if you look over in your vmix uh in your vmix call window you should have a uh side chat okay yeah I'll just see. take the I'll yeah, see. So, send it to him that way and he'll he'll grab it off there and play it right so mm -hmm. is, um I, I couldn't really see it properly is it showing a helium balloon falling slowly or something it, pretty much exactly yeah so i would like to know based on the principle of equivalence I mean, how it, is that didn't how really that, see it falling how would that work? It, it's just in a guess, okay we'll send the video you know we can make our we can make our excuse that's fine we'll send the video that's fine yeah let, let's okay, play the video research, full just, screen, you know. so, so that way uh I've I've done done my research. I fully prepared, you know. we can make our excuses if you want that's fine <clears throat> okay right but i've got I'll, a question for you is um well give me a question that's fine in a in a vacuum chamber, if everything's to do with density and buoyancy, why is anything falling? Again, so based on my theory of physics, all things are in a state of falling or rising. Everything is in motion. Newton's law, he says that things are at rest. Nothing is at rest. Everything is falling. Everything is in motion. But the ground creates the illusion that things are no longer falling. Everything is in a state of falling or rising based on density and relativity, yeah. regardless of a medium. The Higgs field gives matter its density relativity, it still has the density, it never changes. It still has it, so of course it's going to move. Newton doesn't say that everything's at rest, he just explains when something at, is at rest, it will stay at rest unless there's a force acting on it. There is no rest, it's, again, it's potential state of motion, it's just the ground that creates the illusion that it's at rest, but really it wants to go up or down, it wants to move. Motion Why? is always motion, there is no rest. Say again, what was that? Yeah. Okay, right, Let, let's break this down to the, the simplest thing, okay? Why? Can we get, get the video? Can we get the video, please? I, I'm, I'm looking, I'm, I'm just looking at the video myself. Yeah. We can play uh, the video Dave, for the people, I'll, sorry. Uh, yeah, Dave, where, where are you at on that video? This is one of those I'm times I wish I'm, I wasn't a moderator. I'm getting, <laughs> I'll just I'm say getting, that. I'm getting it, so give me a second. Now this is a hey. I know why you get that. I want to say this is a great, uh, okay, right. a great um, discussion. First off, there yeah. hasn't been much need for a moderator. Good job. Um, so the, can we play the video? That what you're presenting is not in a vacuum. It's in a partial vacuum. Vacuum, vacuum, regardless, mate. Regardless. No, vacuum. no, no. We, again, we can make our excuses if we want. Things. There and is also, some. Again, we can make our there. excuses if we want. No, no. Again, we, we, can, again, we can make our excuses if we want. It is. Right, but that's for that, that you, completely debunks the principle of equivalence. Okay, stop. 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 Hold on, hold, hold on, you, hold on, guys. Yeah. Can we play the video, please? Hold Can down. we just play the video? Can yeah. we play the video? One please? person at a time. One person at a time. Let let fight the flat earth uh, refute this after the video. You explain what's going yeah, on okay. in the video, and then fight the flat okay, earth will uh, refute that. Okay. Yeah, the video's playing right now. Well, again, again, the vacuum. Okay, he's gonna really, oh, you know, take the air out now in this vacuum and create. Watch the helium balloon. Fall down. So let's see. Let's see what we do right now. And again, as it's playing again, just to go over the principle of equivalence. The principle of equivalence states that all objects fall at the same rate, regardless of their mass or composition, provided there are no forces acting upon them other than gravity. Right? All objects fall at the same rate. So I would like to know, based on this video, would a sack of bricks and a helium balloon fall at the same rate? Based on this video, we can cl clearly see the rate at which it's falling. Would a sack of bricks and a helium balloon hit the ground at the same time? That's what I would like to know based on that video. We can see, clearly see the rate. The people can see it. I okay, know the answer so to that question. I would like to know the answer. Um, I, I, if you let me respond now, um, that'd be great. Yeah, so um, as I will read the description of the video, a helium filled balloon will sink in helium <laughs> surroundings, a hydrogen wow. surrounding or in partial vacuum of a vacuum chamber. Here in this vid, we are able to make a helium filled balloon sink in a partial vacuum by evacuating Excuses. air from the vacuum chamber, we then make it rise by letting air back into the chamber. There is no vacuum there. There is a partial vacuum, which is a completely oh, yeah. different Excuses. thing. Please don't interrupt me. Right? It's a completely different right, thing sorry, sorry. to a vacuum. There is still air in there. There is still buoyancy happening in there because there is still air. There is a buoyant force with whatever atmosphere is in there. If that was a complete vacuum, then it would fall at nine point, well, it'd accelerate at 9.8 meters per second squared. Based on that video, if there was a sack of bricks and a helium filled balloon in a chamber with that amount of atmosphere, then the bricks would hit the ground first. However, if all of the atmosphere is evacuated, making it an actual vacuum, both the helium balloon and the bricks will fall with an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. Done.
Again, the, the, look what we're doing here. We're making you're making excuses for gravity. This is the same force that binds entire planets around a sun and a solar system. The same enormous, gigantic force that creates a black holes that you know okay. gravitational I'm waves. Gonna stop you enormous there. Hold force. On. I'm going to stop you there because that is a complete non sequitur that had nothing to do with a balloon in a vacuum. It does not because we're yeah. making excuses for gravity. That's what he's doing. He's making excuses know, he's, for he's the ready to the description. He read you the description right, by the author of the video, so which refutes what you stated. The whole chat's against me. Right. The whole chat's against me. Right, let me, ask, let me no. ask a question here. Tahuti, how do you calculate buoyancy? How do, what do you, how, how do I calculate density relativity that we ask him? No, no, no. How do you calculate buoyancy? What's the actual formula for buoyancy? Uh, you can pull up if you want. I don't mind. You, 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 I'll let you educate me right now. No, no, no I'm on. asking you what it is. Well, I, 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 like, again, when buoyancy. it comes to this... I do my own system called density relativity. No, 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 no. That's what I deal with. A direct question. Can you tell me the formula for buoyancy? I don't deal with it. I deal with density relativity. That's my model. That's what I deal with. Density relativity. If you okay, want to bring so up buoyancy, you bring up the formula. You bring right, up the okay, formula. I'm, I'm not asking about your model or anything right now. I am asking for the actual formula for buoyancy. How does normal people, uh, how does everybody else in the world calculate buoyancy? What are the that's the not what I use though. That's your if you want to bring that's your model, that's not what I use. I do density relative, that's my model. No, density I'm not relativity. Asking for model. I'm asking for you to tell me the actual formula for buoyancy that is used. That's the I don't I don't use that. So I can't bring it, I can't tell you because I, I don't use that. If you want to tell people, I, you, you I, do tell me right now. Right. Right. Just say I don't know. Five, five I don't use that. Can I my, one second? Uh, to Hootie, let's say that somebody wanted to sink something to a certain level in a, a tank of water. How would they calculate yep. what the buoyant force is, and how would they calculate exactly how far it, how far it wanted to fall? These are things that we can do with our understanding of buoyancy. We can calculate how far something will sink down. This is how subs work. So we can calculate how far yep. things will, will sink down based on the gravitational acceleration force. Now, how would you do that yourself in your way and with your worldview without the calculation accelerating force? Yeah, but again, that's but that's all it is. Gravity is just mathematics. It's just a calculation. That's all it is. That doesn't mean it's an observable gravity. That's that doesn't. It's, observable that's gravity. Gravity. No, it's just a calm? calculation. I've got like, more evidence. Can I show more evidence, please? Yeah, sure. Can I show more evidence, please? I haven't seen any evidence. So, okay, yet, but yeah. So yeah. the next evidence I would like to show. Evidence forever. <laughs> The next right. evidence I would like to show now. Mm -hmm. Give me a second. Let's see if I can pull it up right now. now. I just want to clarify that that okay. video did not show anything falling in a vacuum. It showed a part on M2 over R squared. Yeah, that's fine. We can, make, we can make excuses. That's fine. So now the next thing I want to show now no, is I didn't make so excuses. Give an explanation. There's a difference. Yeah, that's fine. So, um... I, I do have one, one, one question for you here. Um, is density a force? No. Did he mute Sorry, himself? I, I can't hear. No, I heard him say no. Can you hear me? Right. Can you hear me? So, density I can isn't barely. A force. Yeah, barely. If density isn't a force, why do things oh, accelerate? Fight the flat earth. Fight the flat earth. Hold on one second. Let's get to Hootie's audio fix because I can't hear him. To Hootie, uh, will you speak into the mic, please? Hello, hello, hello. For yeah, some reason, like you've quiet. dropped. And, yeah, it, for some reason, you've dropped. Uh, do me a favor. <clears throat> Before we go any further, will you click refresh on your browser uh, to make sure that we get um, your full audio? Oh, I think you just logged back in. Yeah, we can't now hear you at all now. Now it's completely muted. Make sure that at the bottom, um, the mute button is not clicked. VMix is a little weird. And then Dave, uh, are you seeing anything on your end? Because I'd like to bring it, make sure that he gets uh, full audio. Um, wait for him to reconnect here. Yeah, he it, it for some reason like it, he was talking and it dropped out immediately while he was talking. I hope he doesn't like have a mic like you had, where it actually used a battery. <laughs> Ooh, I don't. Yeah, can you turn him up, Dave? Because it's coming in a little low. Yeah, I'll I'll give him some gain here. Okay. Just um, mic yeah, go you. ahead. Just looking human on them. There we yeah, go. I can That's hear you. Perfect, right there. 
That's perfect. So I want to show it. I'm sorry. So can I, can I, can I, can I, can I, density isn't a force. Yeah. So why do Most things not. accelerate when you drop them? They don't just fall, but they accelerate. Why is that? Again, you know, aerodynamics, things of that nature, aerodynamics. Uh, sorry, can you explain to me where the force comes from? Aerodynamics, I just told you right there. That's why things accelerate aerodynamics. Oh, right. Well, can I see a mathematical formula for, for that? Because aerodynamics doesn't equal a force. That's just a, a word that describes how well something goes through something else. It, it's it's exactly. not speed, that's a like force. Speed, top speed is based on aerodynamics. You know this already? Top speed is aerodynamics. Well, no, aerodynamics will help something go faster, or uh, you know, which is why an F1 car is um, so aerodynamic and has a big spoiler to keep it stuck to the ground. Yep. But that's, that, that's, that's not, it doesn't explain why when I let go of this pencil, it immediately starts to accelerate at 9.8 meters per second squared. Why is that? Again, Where does the actual uh, force come from? There is no force. There is no centripetal force. I can jump. Well, well, wait, 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 okay. So to say that there's no force, you have to deny that acceleration requires a force. Are you doing that? No, I'm not really. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, no, I'm not denying that. Again, I can jump. Okay, if there's a force, well, how am I wait, overcoming wait, wait, this force wait, wait, by jumping? Then. How am I overcoming this force by jumping? How is a ladybird overcoming this force by taking off from a leaf pad? Explain uh, that. Wait, I'm sorry. We, we're not talking about that right now. I just want to know. Oh, right, things are... Right, it's a very simple question. Things accelerate oh, you when you let them go. They don't just fall, right. they accelerate at 9.8 right. meters per second squared. Okay? Look, F equals MA. Therefore, acceleration requires a force. So where is the force that is making this accelerate downwards coming from? Again, if you're saying there's a force pulling it. So are you suggesting that there's a force pulling it down? Is that what you're suggesting? I'm, I'm suggesting that there's an acceleration happening, therefore there is a force. So, so there's a force pulling you down. Are saying, yeah, so where, no, you're saying it's not gravity, so where does the force come from? I'm not saying about down or is anything, I'm just saying the, there is acceleration is there happening. So is there a force pulling because it force, down? Then? Yes, because acceleration well, how can I jump? requires how a can force. I jump? Wait, so, yeah, so, it's also, so there's a force pulling it down then? Is that what you're yeah. saying? And you can jump because you jump? exert a force in the other way. So, uh, so I'm, my yeah, little legs I, are exerting a greater force than gravity. Is that what you're telling me then? Okay, can you explain my little to legs. me the relationship between M1 and M2 in the equation F equals GM1 M2 over R squared? That's what, are you talking about Newton's law of gravity? Yeah, because that, that only explains in... exactly how you can jump and how a butterfly can float. Yeah, that works in, an, on a, in space that no one's fully explored. Yeah, that works. But I'm not here to refute that law as it pertains to space no, up there that no one's fully as well. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. I can jump. Yes, you can because you exert a force which is then overcome by gravity. Right, let a me explain to you in terms of how the um, law of gravitation works. Okay? Okay, the force okay, of gravity... Okay, Oh, hold on. Right, the force um, to Hootie, if, if, he's going to, if you're going to ask him a question, let him answer. Well, I've got more evidence. Can I show more, more evidence, please? But you asked him a no, question, I'm, and I'm as soon as he started to answer, he started talking. Wrong, Don't right? do that. Okay, that doesn't sit well with me. Right? Okay, sorry about that. Finish okay, so question. So you are asserting that because the force of gravity can hold trillions of tons of, of, of ocean to the ball, that you shouldn't be able mm -hmm. to jump and the butterfly shouldn't be able to fly, right? Basically, yeah. Overcoming gravity, well, basically. That yeah. makes you a fucking idiot thing, because well, right, let I'm me explain. The force I'm of over. gravity is acting on. Right, let's talk about the ocean. Every molecule oh. of water is having the force of gravity act on that molecule of water. Now, the force of gravity is proportional oh. mm -hmm. to the mass, say, the mass of each molecule of water, and the the sum of the that mass and the mass of the Earth. So you have it proportional to the sum of the two masses and inversely proportional to the distance between their centers. Meaning that um, there is, say a butterfly does not have much mass. Therefore, there is not much gravitational force acting on that butterfly. Mm -hmm. So when a butterfly flaps its wings and creates an opposing force, it overcomes gravity. When the butterfly stops flapping its wings, the butterfly comes down. If we look at the ocean, you can look at it like, 
the ocean's absolutely massive. There's loads of mass. So there's a lot of gravitational force holding that down. Or you can look at it as each molecule of water is having a gravitational force acting on it. But the important thing about the ocean is that it's not trying to exert a force to fly away. When you jump, you exert a force which can overcome the force of gravity acting on your mass. But once that energy that you have put into the jump dissipates, the force of gravity takes back over and you fall back down. You're not defying gravity. You're not um, like, it's not some kind of gotcha because a butterfly flying and the ocean sticking to the earth is what we expect to happen within our model. That it's not, it doesn't work because that's exactly what is supposed to happen with our model. Okay, so, so can, I, can I respond now then? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so now... I like how he spoke about the water. That that part was key. That, that you know segues into what I'm about to bring up. So I'm going to talk about the water, act, gravity acting on the water. I like that. So now I want to show you this right. I hope you can see that. So can you see that? Can you guys see that? Yeah. The, um, yes. Yes, yeah. I can see it. Tennis ball. So this is what happens. Water coming off the tennis ball. Water. This is what happens when water, when you have water on a spinning ball. This is what happens, right? When water is on a spinning ball. This is what takes place. Okay. So now you're telling me that spinning. That. Can I finish, please? Can I finish? So now yeah. you're telling me now. Yes. Yeah. Let him finish. Uh, fight the flutter. Let him finish this part. Sorry, my bad. So you saw right there. That's what happens to water on a spinning ball in this current physics, in the physics, the law of physics. That's what we see. So now you're telling me that based on your model, we have a spinning ball spinning at a thousand miles an hour, and there's so, there's tons of water sticking to this ball spinning at a thousand miles an hour. So you're saying, so what? So what? Again, gravity supposedly keeps the water sticking to the ball. Now I have an interest in something else I want to show you right here. So now I hope you can, can see I, this can also. Oh, hold on, hold on. Oh, uh, on Tahuti, Tahuti, one second. Let him respond to that one point, and then we'll move back. Respond. Go on, then. I've got more evidence. Go on. Okay, respond. so that tennis ball was probably spinning way faster than the Earth was. Um, the Earth spins at, let me say this very, very slowly for you. The Earth spins at 0. 0.000694 RPM. That is half as fast as the hour hand on a clock. Also, mm -hmm. that tennis ball does not have much mass. It does not yeah, have yeah. much of its own gravitational field. So it's not going to hold things to it the same way that the Earth does, because what's happening to that tennis ball is all happening within Earth's gravitational field. To equivalate to, uh, that to the Earth is completely ridiculous because they are not the same in any way, shape, or form. Again, that's, what, that's I, what the round uh, Earth is. Doing. So can I finish, please, now? Yeah. So I just want to keep it at Again, one point at a time. That's fine. So that's what the round earthers would do. Again, gravity is so universal, but yet so subjective at the same time. Oh, this, uh, this, this has less mass or less gravity acts upon it. Again, it's so universal that entire solar systems are being turned by this force of gravity, but yet it's so subjective at the same time. This is what these round earthers would do to make excuses. So now I want to show you another video right now. Again, right, clarify what you mean by subjective. Again, that's what you're doing. Again. It's so, you're saying it's so universal that it can, it, entire planets can be warped around the sun, but then again, it's so subjective that, oh, this has less mass, so there's less gravity acting upon it. Again, who decides that? How are you, why are you deciding things for such a universal force? Why are you making, you know, well, okay. different we're, we're not deciding things. Everything what? that's happening is explained by F equals GM1 M2 over R squared. <laughs> Everything. It's not outside yeah, that of that. It, literally, that one equation explains all of your issues. Seriously. Okay, that's fine. So now I want to show this right now. I want to show this. So I hope you can see this. So now I hope you can see this right now. I hope you can see this on my screen. Yeah, just hold it there for a minute that, yeah? so I can see it on the screen. One second. So can you, see, you can see that, yeah? Can you, can you see it? Yeah. I'm just waiting. It's, it's a, like 20 seconds behind on the stream so I can, I can see it at better quality. If I could share my screen, it would be a little bit better. I didn't, I didn't know I couldn't share my screen, but I hope you can see this. Right, okay, right. So explain what you're trying to demonstrate there. So essentially what's actually taking place here now, I hope you can see it again. As you can see right there, the water is actually above the rim of the cup. And that's what makes it so interesting. The water actually rises above the rim of the cup. So now you just spoke about how gravity acts upon the water. So I, what I showcased there was mm -hmm. a ball spin and, and then gravity and then the water. That's what happens to water on a spinning ball. Now, you just talking about gravity holds the waters together. So what this experiment is now showing is that water can actually 
I'll pause that right there. I'll quickly pause that. Water can actually rise above the level of the cup. So now this same gravity, gravitational mm -hmm. force that acts upon the water that holds thousands and tons of water on the earth, spinning that how, how fast you ever said you, how fast you said it was spinning, but yet and still we see water above the rim of a cup, but yet gravity is pretty much defying gravity at this particular time. Gravity is unable to pull this water down to make it spill. It sits above the rim okay. of the cup without spilling. Can you please, please explain that for the people? Uh, yeah, simple. Um, you, you do know <laughs> that water is actually sticky, right? Yeah, so explain, so explain how it defies gravity. How does it find its strength it's not and enormous gravity in any way? It, it, it has power of gravity. Water, it's not defying gravity in any way at all. Water has, like, uh, you know, it sticks together and holds itself together. And it will do that until it reaches a point where it kind of spills over. Um, it's, again, nothing outside of our model that's just explained by what water is and how water is cohesive to itself. There's nothing not really. outside of our model there, again. It's not defying gravity. It is well, it having kind of forces at let, let, hey, let, 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 let me interject. Let me interject. We have uh, we just reached our time limit, so let me let you guys finish this point, but don't bring up any more points, please. Go Again, ahead, what Greg. it kind of um, is because or to Hootie, to Hootie, no, go ahead, to Hootie. Well, it, what it kind of is because it, it, again, the gravity again, you said it holds the water like, together, it holds the on this spinning ball, but again, we clearly see water above the rim of a glass, unable to spill. Why is gravity? Not acting up, I'm not pulling this water down. So you're trying to set, tell, to explain to me that the you know, gravity, how is how is water overcoming this gigantic, enormous force of gravity that is able to pull and warp entire suns uh, and planets? Let me planets get you the equation for surface tension. Here we go. Here we go again. So again, we gotta we're making excuses for gravity. Here we go again. How is this no, enormous no, 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 force not, of gravity overcoming? Tahiti, with respect, stop saying I'm making excuses by giving you explanations. What? It's not excuses because well, you don't understand it. Oh, this is why I, I, because I, I, this is okay, calm down, calm down, calm down. Fight the flat earth. Hey, fight the flat earth. Fight the flat earth. Will you just answer the question? Uh, right. So who the let, him, let him finish answering the question is, real quick. Um, F equals 2 SD, where F is the force in newtons, S is the surface tension uh, in newton meters, and D is the length of the... Uh, uh, you know, so there is actually an equation that can explain the force of the surface tension. And... Once gravitate, gravity overcomes the force of surface tension, then the water would spill. It's exactly what you were talking about as you need a force to overcome something else. So surface tension is a thing. If you want to deny that, then that's absolutely ridiculous. Um, to surface tension. That explains exactly what your issue with. I've got to say that mm -hmm. this has been the most basic fucking arguments you've come up with. You've uh, uh, you know no, 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 everything you've, you've made so many excuses thousands of times. So many excuses. You made so many excuses. Okay, okay, okay. Many hold on, hold on. Uh, so let me let me let me step in. Uh, let me step no, in, no, guys. Uh, I think I think that's where we're going to end it because Tahuti, do you have anything to say to what he talked about as far as surface tension goes? Other than that, we'll conclude the uh, the discussion part. But I'll give you the opportunity to refute anything he just said about surface tension. I'm not here to refute anything about surface tension. But what we're showcasing really is the excuses being made for gravity. As I close this thing, I would say that gravity again is this universal force that again can warp entire solar systems around suns and planets around suns. But yet and still, the water again and these different elements on Earth. Simply, gravity cannot explain. Gravity does not work on Earth. Simple okay. as that. The model okay. don't work. The model so, falls apart. That's the closest like statement. How it does. Okay. Okay. No, now, we don't. Now, no. Fight the flat Earth. Fight the flat Earth. Um, if you want to say anything about what he just said, please respond. At some point, we'll reach yeah. a point where nobody has anything else to say that's constructive. So go ahead. The the nonsense he keeps bringing up about gravity doesn't work on Earth. Um, just clearly shows how little research and knowledge this well, guy actually has well, ever hold done. Well, hold on. Just refute the point. Just refute the point. Just refute what the, the point. What the equation F equals GM1 M2 over R squared means and how it actually gives you a force, a force that you can put against other forces to see what will happen. You can use the equation of gravity um, that I just said to see how much surface tension can happen before it spills over. You can use the equation for gravity to see how fast things will fall in a particular medium. The equation okay. for gravity, Newton, 
universal law of gravitational attraction works in space and on the ground. If you keep saying it doesn't, no. then you're a fucking yeah. idiot. Hey, That's fight fine. the flat earth. Um, let, let's stop there. And to Hootie, I'll give you the last moment to, re to respond to anything. Just please don't bring up any new points, but respond to anything he, want, he just said right now. So really, that's really what the round earthers would do. Again, this <laughs> was about in the videos. You know, when you bring the slighter hand mathematical, this really that's all they have. That's all they they can run to. Really, the mathematics. That's all they can run to. They can't actually show you any real observable evidence. There is no observable gravity on Earth. Gravity only works in space that, that has yet to be explored. It's a fantasy. It's a belief on Earth. It collapses. It falls apart. It has not showcased any real obs observable evidence. He has not proven and shown an observable mass. He hasn't really explained any of the points. I've what brought up this all dance right. around the question. That's all he's done, pretty much. That's okay. all he's done. So we'll exactly. stop it there. We'll stop it. We'll stop it there. Uh, because we could go back and forth saying, yes, you did. No, he didn't. Yes, you did. No, he didn't. But uh, we'll stop it there. This has been a great conversation. I'm glad I got to be a part of it. Uh, let's uh, do our closing remarks, I guess. Uh, to Hootie, I'll give you the option of having the first closing remarks or the second one. Uh, go ahead. You can choose. I'll take the second. I'll take the second. Okay. Uh, fight the flat earth. Please uh, refute or submit your closing remarks and let's end this debate. Okay. So, in this debate, I have shown that the way of Tahiti has no clue about the model that he is actually arguing against. The way of Tahiti doesn't understand Newton's law of gravitational attraction and its implications to our world. He doesn't understand that um, acceleration requires a force. He doesn't understand what um, the conservation of momentum is. He doesn't understand what the Higgs field is. Uh, he thinks it makes density for some reason. Um, he doesn't understand um, about the difference between a vacuum and a, you know, a partial vacuum and a complete vacuum. I have attempted to explain to him. Um, you, uh, I could cite ev everything that I've said here. Isn't me just making stuff up? It is what the scientific consensus says, and I can refute every single point that he has brought up because he doesn't understand the model that he is arguing against and that is the reason that he thinks gravity doesn't work is purely because he doesn't understand it if he actually did some studying and some research and looked into what the equation f equals gm1 m2 over r squared actually means and the implications of it then he wouldn't have come on here and completely embarrassed himself in front of several hundred people okay. um finally okay. The P900 is a rubbish camera, um, and it's not a telescope. So there you go. Okay, so Fight the Flat Earth, is that uh, your closing remarks? I'm done. Mr. Tahuti, uh, on to you, sir. So again, this is, again, I knew this coming, I knew coming into this debate, this is what the round earthers would do. They will not show any observable, real evidence of gravity. It's a belief, it's a philosophy. And he was shown, he has shown that, and he, that's what he showcased throughout the whole debate. It's not unobservable. He wants me to look to the equation, look to this equation. No, no, show me the observable gravity on earth. Observe, you can't show it to me. And again, we've went through so many different things. We went through the equivalence principle, we went through so many different things that really he has yet to really fully explain to the people. Again, yeah, you can do this thing. You can drop objects. We know density. We know how it all works. We know these things. But again, there is no force pulling it down. I can jump. Ladybirds can take out from leaf pads. So again, I've showcased. I've really what I've shown in this debate really that the round earth is it's just a belief. It's just a philosophy. And if I, and and not going into this debate, if I knew I could I couldn't share my screen, I would have prepared things a little bit differently. But if I could share my screen, I would even show even more evidence proving that it is a philosophy. It is a belief. You made it up. It's flat. Period. Done. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. Well, is that yeah. it? Okay, great. Um, I guess, man, fuck, that ended out super um, chat. Excellent. Uh, well, yes, let's do super a, chat. Can I, a, uh, can I get a final observation yeah, in oh, here? Yes. Yeah. Sean. Hold on. Before we do super chats, can me and Sean please speak on a few things? Yes. I, I only have okay one little point to bring up. If that's okay with both of the White Fathers and Tahuti. Debate's yeah, over. Fine. Go ahead and bring up whatever you need to bring up. Yeah, the, the debate, since the debate is over, I've done my job as a moderator. I do have, I have made one observation in the evidence you provided to me. Um, I really liked your pennies in a glass thing because it gives a very good demonstration of surface tension. And I loved where you paused the video because it was just like a half a second too late, where it showed where the surface tension was exceeded by the force of gravity and water started to spill out of the cup. No, no. Thank you for showing that. Yeah. No, that, yes. that's, that's, that's fine, but that's not what that was, but that's cool. That's cool. Now, now, so again, hey, you know, he doesn't even understand what showed. It's hilarious. Mm -hmm.
<laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Since the yeah, debate's friend, over, I, I've been biting of, my yeah. tongue the whole time. Uh, yes, Tahuti. Uh, that is unfortunately evidence right there where you can a measurable evidence where you can measure the downward uh, the downward accelerating force versus the accelerating force of surface tension. So um, yeah, that's fine. But again, I got more evidence to showcase. Really, what, you know, if I if I know going into this debate, I couldn't right. share the screen. I would have. All right, and that and more. that's fair enough. Yeah. And that's fair enough because, uh, <laughs> like I said, we uh, this is your first time on, so uh, I'm sure like. I'm not a normal host on the the non sex show, but I'm sure that they'd love to have you back on in the future because you actually presented an argument. I mean, shit, you have no idea how many flat earthers get on here and do not present an argument, not one bit. They don't even try. They just recite Eric Dubé and they say we're shills and they say we yeah. Australia doesn't exist and all all kinds of crazy shit. So uh thank you very much for at least presenting evidence and having a constructive conversation with us round earthers now i'd like to point out that when you call us round earthers you're also talking about flat earthers because they think the earth is round as well just on a two-dimensional plane instead of a three <laughs> well i'm not, not sure about that but again no i appreciate that again, that's what about. pedantry <laughs> but yes <laughs> I'll take spherical earthers uh, for the win. There we go. Normal yeah, if you want, people. If you want. Actually, I prefer, I prefer the term "normal people," not idiots. Yeah. All All right. Right. If you want, I think David should read out the super chats. Right. And yeah. As, super chat time. As I'm reading said super chats, I am going to mute both participants because otherwise, this will take forever. Just saying. So, we are going to start with AC Castillo. I'm drunk and a fool, so take my money. Thank you. The evil Scotsman, I am now scared my Lego will come to life. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Reap, I love science and you guys grabbing it. Night Demon US, I love you guys. One day I'd like to come debate. AC Castillo again, giving money to say Tahuti is a Poe and has nothing. Okay. Why do flat earthers always say all pics of Earth and space is CGI? Most are as they admit, but not all. Why do globe earthers let this slide in debates? Godless engineer, can Tahuti Mabudi explain his ideas about gravity and uppity? Thank you, Godless engineer. Quiasa says density comes from the Higgs field. Thank you for that brand new stupidity. I admit, it's the most original stupidity I've heard in ages. Wesley Smith. Why do flat earthers assume the earth and space should be so easily explainable? And why so scared of NASA? NASA is a nerd organization with no power at all, at least to my man. Oh yeah, you gotta get money and attention. Just because a force is far-reaching, says Helios575, doesn't mean it's super strong. Gravity has an amazing reach, but is actually overall fairly weak in strength. Mokiaku86 says, How do flat earthers not believe in gravity? It's a provable fact. The way of Tahuti's not understanding gravity proves he's an idiot. Ding. So this prepared debate by Wendy Benvenidus to Tahuti. Tahuti, surface tension is taught in 8th grade physical science. Good lord, man. Uhan Rodrik says, Tahuti and the goldfish. Faux hammer was dumpster fire. Why are so many flurfers have such a basic misunderstanding of science? Tahuti, what's your highest level of education? And I think we'll leave that. That's it. All right, have you unmuted us all? Hello. Are we are we still muted? <laughs> <coughs> no. No, um, I just I just muted the the participants in the debate, not you guys. Oh, well thank you for that. Oh. <laughs> so they heard me laughing. Uh me yeah, too. thank you to the guy. <laughs> yes, they I, did. Thank you. Thank you to the guy who is now forever dementedly uh affected by the talking Lego. Uh I appreciate it. Uh, I worked really hard to get my Lego to talk and move the way it does. So any acknowledgement is appreciated at this point. 
And whoever said they were drinking me to uh oh man, hold on, I have to set that up. Oh no, I don't. You can do the roll with it. It's amazing. Let's see, I'm trying to raise one eyebrow. Oh, I strengthened my eyebrows. Uh the one eyebrow will come uh in the future uh because I can actually (laughs) raise one eyebrow, but I can make my pupils move for anybody that can see that. Uh, I'd like to personally thank, uh, Tahuti. Uh, Tahuti, thank you very much for coming along. Uh, you are a great sport about this whole thanks thing. He actually, I'm sorry, go ahead. So thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, uh, thank you for coming on. Like I said, you are one of the better flat earth participants, uh, in these, uh, debates or discussions, uh, being that it's formatted the way it is, we'll call it a debate, but, um, yeah, it was great. Uh, I I totally enjoyed being a part of this, even sitting back as if I was in the chat. This was great. It was much better than seeing Russian vids come on here and say that everything that Fight the Flat Earth was saying was based on 666, you know, and some kind of I still really want to big Russian vid. Oh, I know. I want to see that too, but I think it was more productive that we had Tahuti because Tahuti is actually uh I don't <clears throat> I don't see him as a po. Uh, I see him I'll as say this. someone who is an alternative sciencer. I'll say this. this, Like I said, this is the first time I've ever had any interaction. I didn't even know who you were before tonight, Tahuti. Um, you do present yourself as somebody who's educated. You're wrong, but you act like you're educated. That's my, <laughs> that's my view of you at this point. Okay, that's fine. I'll take you, you that. Know the lingo, you know the lingo. It's just incorrect. <laughs> okay. Hey, uh, let me ask you something, Tahuti. What are you doing tomorrow? Do you have some free time tomorrow during the daytime? Um, well, what time exactly? No, because obviously the time, zone, the time zone is a little bit different. Isn't it? Yeah, well, we're trying to do a second show called Science or Satire, and I'd like to ha- bring you on and have more of the discussion that you and I were planning on having, uh, but we can do that on our show as well. You yeah, well, just email me, let me know the time, and I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll email you back. Then. Yeah, that works. That works. Okay, is there anything else that anybody would like to offer to uh, tonight's uh, discussion? I just want to give I'm another good. massive my congratulations job, to the Office Engineer. Yeah. Yes, big time oh, congratulations. No, hey, hey. Um, yeah, exactly. No, you go ahead, because I'll, I'll follow you. Oh, <laughs> just huge congratulations to um, Gallus Engineer, and thank you, Kyle, for officiating that marriage, and I hope that they both find a whole lot of happiness. And thank you for letting us step in to take your spots while you guys were busy doing real life things. Yes, that's it. That's a, a, about what I wanted to say, except for that I want to tell Godless Engineer, Steve McCray, Boolianator, uh, Caitlin, and uh, Kyle that I love all you guys. I'm so happy for everybody that's involved with this show, especially Godless Engineer and Caitlin for getting married tonight. I can't wait to your next live stream where I can uh, give you guys fucking all kinds of shit uh, about being married. And uh, I'm glad you guys are doing your thing. Love you guys. And as a final from the producer, Dave, we will see you all tomorrow for The Smoking Nun at 8 p.m. Woohoo! Bye. All right. See you.